You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Life is a complex proposition, leading us and leaving us to our own devices to figure out our way and to make sense of life. This is Highway to Boundless with your host, Dr. Sophia Samuels. Listen as Dr. Samuels helps us to lift ourselves to higher levels of joy in order to truly realize the most meaningful yearnings deep inside all of us. So now, please welcome the host of Highway to Boundless, Dr. Sophia Samuels. Welcome to Highway to Boundless. I'm your host, Dr. Sophia Samuels, broadcasting live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. You can also listen to Highway to Boundless on podcast through iHeart.com and Apple iTunes. It is such a pleasure to be back with you once again. I have missed being with you over the past three weeks, owing to professional training, which was then immediately followed by a serious back injury that I sustained, enjoying and employing faith, a number of in-home treatments, and a determination to heal in order to return to the work that I love, I greet you with a big smile. On June 14th, I dedicated show number 13, the one just before this one, to the laws and factors that create success in any endeavor of life, and I stated that while I had discussed various relevant factors, I had not covered all of them. Today, I am focusing on another factor that contributes to personal success. And while some of you may question the legitimacy of this factor in the pool of contributing influences for success, it is nonetheless applicable and important. I believe that upon your consideration of the view that I will provide, that you too will see its legitimacy in the course of successful accomplishment. I'm going to share a story with you that Mary Morrissey, my mentor, tells of a woman named Carla with whom she worked a number of years ago. Carla and her life's riveting experience aptly exemplifies the principle highlighted in today's show. Carla, now an adult woman, had an experience during her elementary school years that nearly destroyed her. I tell you this story as a way of introducing the theme of today's show. Carla had grown up in a Catholic family. She had gone to Catholic school. She was a kid who was always in trouble. She always asked a lot of questions, and her endless flow of questions irritated her teachers, the nuns. She said, one day in the fifth grade, her nun teacher just absolutely lost her temper, took the little 10-year-old in front of the entire class and said, all right, what you are all going to do now is one by one, stand up and name something about Carla that you don't like, and we're going to all tell Carla what's wrong with her. Carla told me that as a 10-year-old, she just remembers standing in this classroom with one student after another, telling her what was wrong with her from the way that she looked to the way she acted, to the way she dressed, to the belief she held, to some of what she, Carla, considered to be the best things about herself, and some of the deepest secrets she had that only her dearest friends would know. 
But in the presence of this authority figure, the nun, one by one, the students did exactly as they had been asked to do. They stood up and they told Carla things that really hurt Carla's feelings. In the authority figure of this nun, somehow in this little girl's mind, she translated that to mean that God was saying these things about her. As time went on, Carla shut down. She began to hate herself. If everyone else saw her this way, that must be how she was. So in junior high school, she began to seek out a cure for her pain. She found it in drugs and alcohol. She drank herself well into her 20s. Then, after 15 years of drinking and drugs, she finally became very ill, and at the threat of losing her life, she went into recovery. She said that in the recovery process, she began to realize that she was discovering a new sense of identity, that her true identity was not at all what she had come to believe about herself based on that fateful day when she was a 10-year-old and riddled with negativity by her classmates under the direction of their teacher, a nun. She saw that the nun was just upset that day, that maybe she was being irritating to that nun, that maybe she was asking too many questions. Certainly the nun had acted in a way that was misguided, but maybe the nun had had a rough day. But also, Carla came to see that the nun was not God nor were all the comments that were hurled at her that day, the definition of her true self. The nun was just a person who got frustrated with a child one day and reacted. But that child had taken those painful comments and had integrated them in the form of a mental response, an emotional response, and a physical response. All of Carla's choices from then forward had been based on what she had come to believe about herself as a a result of that demoralizing experience. The information that spewed from the mouths of Carla's classmates were forced characterizations and judgments that Carla took as her defining qualities, character assassinations that were very, very wrong to have been required of her classmates. So while in recovery, Carla began to realize that her true identity was based on her divine nature. That didn't mean that she didn't have amends to make or things to make right about the life she had lived, but it did mean that she was not defined by those negative attributes she had so long held on to, nor was she defined by the numbing behaviors that she had chosen to mitigate her pain. She began to recognize that there was something in her that was worthwhile, way more than she had any idea of. Was Carla deeply wounded and prof- uh, wronged and profoundly wounded that day in her class when she was bombarded with personal attacks on her very being? You bet she was. Did Carla's own self-deprecating behavior following that hateful incident turn in on her and l- took her to a near-fatal ending? Yes, it did. Was part of Carla's recovery releasing the crippling and controlling thoughts planted in her 10-year-old mind that fateful day and then reframing the entire incident in a way that she could get some relief? Yes. Was the principle of forgiveness used in her recovery? Though not having been explicitly stated in the story, I'm going to surmise that the answer is yes, as she had not only the nun and other students to forgive, but she had herself to forgive as well for her years of self-abuse. We have approached break time. 
You are tuned in to Highway to Boundless with your host, Dr. Sophia, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we return, I will talk more at length about the connection between forgiveness and success. Please stay tuned. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Le Col des Beaux-Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20-year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. I am so pleased that you have stayed with us. I am your host, Dr. Sophia, on Highway to Boundless, transmitting live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. There is a fundamental spiritual principle that frees us from the bondage of hateful, harmful, life-altering experiences, a bondage so strong that it can hinder or even stop us from realizing a successful, happy, fulfilling life, and that principle is forgiveness. In the throes of unyielding pain, of tormented memory over past abuse that consumes our energy, that clouds our perception, that blackens our emotional skies, and that blocks our forward momentum. Our life can only be freed of these shackles through forgiveness. For to hold on to the darkness of the past is to live in bondage to people and circumstances that we cannot change. Our power is therefore recognized and exemplified by freeing ourselves from this bondage through forgiveness. This show is dedicated to the principle of forgiveness and its impact on our lives and on our pathways to success. It has been said that it is the person who forgives that is the greater, the more powerful, the more blessed than the one who does not forgive. Gandhi stated, the weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong, close quote. And I will explain this concept further on. Peter, the disciple of the master Jesus, Ask the master, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him until seven times? The master answered, not seven times, but 70 times seven, close quote, indicating that it is for us to forgive indefinitely. Why is the act of forgiveness so stressed in the process of healing and on the path to personal progression? To answer this question, I'm going to approach it from the back end. Let's look at the circumstances that often prevail 
in the life of the person who does not forgive, some of the most difficult and challenging of peoples and circumstances to forgive are the rapist, the child molesters, the physically and psychologically violent, the spouse and child beater, the emotionally disconnected, the murderer, the parents who pimp their children for drug money, the drug addicts who feed their addictions and starve their children, the home wrecker, the parents and guardians who neglect and abandon their children, the caregivers who psychologically and emotion- emotionally abuse and neglect their charges, and so forth. Then there are circumstances like betrayal, deception, bitter divorce, loss of financial assets due to theft by one you once loved, being overlooked for a job promotion when you were the very best qualified of all. For people who live with the devastating effects resulting from circumstances like those I just mentioned, they not only suffer from the original abuse, they then suffer even more from their tormented memories with blame towards the abuser and blame towards self. Shame, guilt, desire for vindication, despair, depression, victimization, hatred, self-loathing, and self-abasement. These psychological and emotional reactions, while totally natural, sear in the mind those anguished torments and yield interminable suffering. I will refer to these reactions as the second arm of abusive or unintentional violations. To forgive is to mitigate, even eliminate, this second arm of often interminable suffering. It means releasing the toxins, the resentments, the anger, and all of the other negative feelings that fill the cavity of our body and which runs through our veins. And to my knowledge, never has the enactment of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth brought about wholeness for anyone, much less healing. But forgiveness can bring wholeness to the one who has been wronged. Often we live with a mistaken idea that if we are suffering from the abuse by the perpetrator, that the perpetrator is also suffering and we intend for the perpetrator to be as sorry as our misery can make him or her feel. All the while, the truth is that the perpetrator does not suffer and the only one being harmed by our misery is ourselves. Another point of great importance is that our sorrow, grief, and misery keep the perpetrator in a position of power over us because we make our lives subject to what he or she did to us. We are thereby held hostage by the darkness visited upon us by another. Furthermore, I must add that we hold within us the key to our delivery from this darkness and from this unwelcomed power. Here is what forgiveness is not. Forgiveness has nothing to do with accepting the abusive behavior of the perpetrator, a feeling responsible for the perpetrator's actions or for condoning the actions of of the perpetrator. Forgiveness has nothing to do with a willingness to re-experience the abusive behaviors ever again. Forgiveness does not open the door for the return of the perpetrator. What forgiveness does do is to open the door to your freedom. Buddha said, holding on to anger is like grasping a hot coal with the intent of throwing it at someone else, yet you are the one getting burned. And equally fitting is this quote as well. Resentment is like drinking a little poison every day, expecting the other person to die. 
We have arrived at the time for another break. You're listening to Dr. Sophia on Highway to Boundless, broadcasting live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we return, I will share a personal story with you. Do stay with us. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. Attorney Renee Marie Smith is changing the way we sell real estate. She wrote a series of books called My Short Sale Guru Guides for all real estate practitioners. Whether you're a homeowner wanting to understand the process, an agent who has been handling short sales for years, or an industry analyst wanting to know how short sales impact your business, Renee uses her vast real estate experience to take a comprehensive look at the recent market phenomena while relaying it in an easy-to-understand format. Through her company, Smith Title Services, Renee has counseled thousands of short sale participants and processed in excess of a thousand short sales. Her knowledge is transformational for real estate professionals and laymen alike, and her live presentations provide people the opportunity to ask specific questions about their issues. Buy her books and schedule her to speak at your next event. Visit www.smithtitleservices.com or call 305-705-3428 or email her at renee at smithtitleservices.com. Isn't it time to sell your property today? Learn the My Short Sale Guru way. Welcome back. I am your host, Dr. Sophia, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we hold on to all the toxic energy that accompanies thoughts related to anger, resentment, rage, hate, grief, shame, fear, retaliation, depression, worthlessness, inferiority, and any other negative feeling arising from having been abused. Like Carla, it turns in on us, and we are the ones who are poisoned and burned. Recall the quote that I shared with you, spoken by the Master Jesus, when he says that we are to forgive 70 times 7. So, whose side is the Master on? Well, he is clearly on your side and on my side. If you have tuned into my radio shows over the months, you have heard me talk again and again about the laws that govern all of life, keeping in mind that laws govern every aspect of life. Every perpetrator confronts the law, and no one is immune to the effects of the law. The laws are exacting, unchangeable, and permanent. The laws were created before the foundation of the world, and every perpetrator will stand before the law and reap his and her just judgment. Nothing that anyone could ever say or do to a perpetrator would compare to the justice dispensed by the law. A perpetrator will never be let off the hook. Throughout the course of my own life, I have grappled with the principle of forgiveness over and over again. One such occurrence took place in the late summer of 2012, uh, 2011, excuse me, when my younger sister traveled to a Mexican border town in Texas for the purpose of selling a piece of property that she owned in Mexico. While trying to put the pieces together to enact a sale, she was seized just beyond the border crossing by suspected criminals, and she has never been seen since. Being familiar with drug trafficking, the warring cartels, 
the lawlessness of the Mexican border towns and the unspeakable manner in which so many of their victims are destroyed and subjected to acid baths to eliminate any possibility of identification. I have only been left to speculate and to surmise the manner of my sister's death. As a result of my sister's loss, or the loss of my sister to my life, I basically retreated from the world for three years, experiencing so many of the emotions that I have described in this show. I slowly accepted the fact that her death did not have to end my own living. And so with that, I picked up the pieces and moved on. Have I forgotten those murderers? I can on, uh, excuse me, have I forgiven? Oh, heavens, I hope I have forgotten. Um, But have I forgiven those murderers? I can honestly say that I have come a long ways in doing so. But the task is not fully completed. It may take the rest of my life, but I pray for the spiritual strength to complete the process of forgiveness. I, like you, am a work in progress. When a person is violated directly or indirectly, I have already stated that there is a psychological backup of toxicity caused by the buildup of negative emotions. I have also said that these toxins inhibit the flow of normal bodily functions. They affect our organs and they darken our moods, thereby skewing our thoughts and perceptions. In essence, these toxins kink up in our energetic system and prohibit the free flow of positive, productive healing energy. I'll give you an example of this process by using common and well-known objects. Think of a garden hose that is kinked in several places, representing the constriction of your energetic system due to holding on to negative, painful experiences caused by others or even caused by yourself. Now turn on the faucet to the degree that the water pressure is high and can flow easily and smoothly through the garden hose. Let the water represent the free-flowing universal energy trying to make its way through you. We have a problem. The water cannot flow freely through the hose, the energetic system, because the system is kinked and will not allow the water to move freely. While a little bit of water may be slowly passing through, the water pressure has been stifled by the kinks. As a result, what you are trying to water is not getting much benefit. Whatever thoughts and feelings prevail in our lives make up the energy from which we live our lives. Remember, as we think we are, or as King Solomon put it, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he, close quote. As we are, we draw more of the same into our lives. We live in an attraction-based universe. Our thoughts and emotions are of a low nature, or I should say when our thoughts and emotions are of a low nature, such as those of anger, resentment, sorrow, pain, fear, retaliation, and so forth. We will draw to ourselves more of those low vibrations through the circumstances and people who come into our lives. Without realizing it or wanting it, we become what we think about and we attract what we are. And when I, when I say we become what we think about and we attract what we are, I'm talking about all of these thoughts and feelings and emotions that can truly mess up our lives. The way out of this dark, congested forest is to forgive and move on. Gandhi stated, Divine guidance often comes when the horizon is the bleakest. Close quote. When we are ready to move forward, we will never be alone in our efforts to reformulate our lives. 
We must take a break now. You are tuned in to Highway to Boundless with your host, Dr. Sophia, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. On our return, I will share with you a powerful example of the principle of forgiveness. Stay tuned. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Dupula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. It's good to have you back. You are listening to Dr. Sophia on Highway to Boundless, transmitting live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. There are those who think... Well, if I forgive, the other person wins, is is let off scot-free, bears no responsibility, close quote. Quite the contrary. To forgive means that you have set yourself free. The other person bears the burden for his or her behaviors and will answer to a higher law that will dispense justice. It means that you can move on with your life unimpeded by the anguish and turmoil of the past. It means that you can look forward and not backwards. It means that you can set your agenda, claim or reclaim your power, and determine your life on your terms and not on past pain and all that is attached to it. To forgive means that you shift your mental focus to higher, more rewarding avenues for you. To forgive opens the door to your capacity to love and trust, though doing so may take some time and patience. Forgiving does not mean that you forget. To forget would be to set yourself up for victimization again. Forgiving does not mean that you continue to be involved with those who abjectly violated or harmed you. To forgive another is to free yourself from the influences or imposition of another who does not have your best good in mind. When we hate, resent, or begrudge others, we hold pain in ourselves for the actions of others. And when we do that, we do not hold our own best good in mind for ourselves. Then we need to ask and ask ourselves, whose good is of most important, is of most importance? of most importance to me. Let me restate that. Whose good is of most importance to me? Acting for the sake of our own best good 
is a powerful reason in and of itself to forgive. No one can do for us what we can only do for ourselves. Forgiveness is an inside job. In last week's show, I shared with you the philosophical points of the first of the first century Jewish rabbi Hillel, the first one being, if I am not for myself, who shall be for me? Close quote. Our ability to heal begins with a decision to heal, and a decision to heal comes from the mind. All of the functioning of the body originates in the mind. All prospects for your future begin in your mind, first with a decision which is then followed by a plan backed up by your reliance on your will, that is, your determination to see your decision through to its rightful outcome. Forgiveness begins with a plethora of blessings. When we forgive, we align ourselves with our higher nature and as such invoke the tender mercies of a loving God. Because of our willingness to forgive, we too are forgiven of our trespasses. When we forgive, we become anew as a vessel able to take on and take in new experiences, new teachings, new opportunities, new and healthier relationships. We are freed from the poisons of the past that now allow us to grow in strength, in character, in ability within our uniquely created created self. The following story is a remarkable account of a woman's ability to forgive in the face of unspeakable Speakable tragedy. She was born in Rwanda, a country of nine million Hutus and one million Tutsis. She was one of four children born to parents who were educators, humanitarians, community leaders, and most importantly, loving and devoted parents who maintained a strong family unity. They were Tutsi. Her name is Imakuli Ilibagiza. At the point where this story begins, Imakuli is away at school studying electrical and mechanical engineering at National University. The Easter holiday was approaching, and her father asked her to return home as the family had been missing her. Though reluctant, owing to her need to study for an approaching exam, Imakuli consented and made the 200 mile trip home, arriving April 6, 1994. The day of her arrival was the very day that the president of Rwanda was flying home from a meeting with another political leader from an adjacent country. That plane was shot down and all of the passengers and crew were killed. Within minutes, the country turned in on itself and the decades of tension that had existed between the Hutu tribe and the Tutsi tribe sparked retaliation by the Hutus against the Tutsis orchestrated by ruthless gangs and government militia. The death of the Rwandan president, who was Hutu, was the pretext used by the Hutus to unleash their madness on the Tutsi people. The rebels, armed with machetes and spears, killed every Tutsi they could find, regardless of age, physical condition, sex, or social standing. Every Hutu male, age 14 and up, was issued a machete. This violence soon became an all-out genocide, an attempt at ethnic cleansing. Nonpartisan Hutus were dragged into the killing frenzy. Each was given a machete. Many reluctantly participated out of fear for their own lives, if they did participate at all, or out of greed for what they were being offered to kill their wives, family members, neighbors, friends, and anyone who was Tutsi. It was an indiscriminate bloodbath with no mercy shown to any Tutsi. We must break for a very short period. 
You are on Highway to Boundless with your host, Dr. Sophia, coming to you live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. On our return, I will continue with a story of Imakuli. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Leip is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.betterhomeandgarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor covering, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. It's great to be back with you. I am your host, Dr. Sophia, on Highway to Boundless, transmitting live on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Imakuli's father hurriedly sent her into hiding, making possible, made possible by an accommodating Hutu pastor. And she was told by her father to stay there until he himself came back for her. Imakuli was put into a very small bathroom and she took with her two books, a French dictionary and an English dictionary. During the period of her hiding, she immersed herself into the English dictionary for the purpose of learning English and also to keep her mind absorbed to the extent possible during those blackened hours of horror. Imakuli and seven other Tutsi women, all strangers to one another, were sheltered in a tiny three-foot by four-foot bathroom whose door was covered by an armoire sufficient in size to cover the door. In less than 100 days, nearly 91 million Tutsi people were killed. Homes, livestock, and properties were destroyed. Imakuli's father was shot to death and left in the middle of the street for others to see. Her mother was taken out in public view and cut to pieces with machetes. Two of her brothers were brutally murdered. One of them set on fire. A third brother had been out of the country at this time. Imakuli and the seven women were in that tiny bathroom for 91 years. Days. They were forbidden to talk or to make any noise. A band of Hutus would periodically go to the pastor's home looking for Imakuli and calling out Imakuli's name in harsh voices filled with hatred, saying, We know she is here somewhere. Find her. Kill her. Close quote. The rebels would move within inches of the bathroom door, but never discovered it. Imakuli said, I never surrendered to death. I felt somehow that I must live, and I prayed to God, please, if you are there, keep them away. Please don't let them find us, close quote. The Hutus referred to the Tutsis as cockroaches in order to dehumanize them and to make their killing easier, more justifiable. 
When the mayhem was finally over, Imakuli, five feet nine inches in stature, emerged from the bathroom weighing 65 pounds, still wearing the same clothes that she had had on the day she entered that bathroom 91 days earlier, never having been able to wash or bathe. Imakuli stated that her survival was miraculous, even extending beyond those 91 days in that tiny bathroom. For once she was out, she was taken to some Tutsi rebels who put Imakuli in the hands of French troops who vowed to keep her safe. However, even the French troops abandoned her to areas where marauding Hutus were everywhere. Still, she escaped them. Imakuli credited her survival to her total belief and connection to God. She said it was as though she learned to live according to the thoughts of God, such that her full being was in a state of forgiveness towards those hunting her. Even through the devastation that she felt and the lingering sorrow over the loss of nearly all of her family, Years later, Imakuli met the man who shot her father. This man expected Imakuli to be angry with him. Instead, when her eyes looked upon him, she cried, and then she put her hand on his shoulder and said, I only have sympathy for you. I forgive you, close quote. In Wayne Dyer's PBS special, Inspiration, Your Ultimate Calling, Imakuli Ilibagiza was one of his highlighted guests. Imakuli was called to the stage to speak to the global audience. She said, in that bathroom, I discovered the greatest source of joy in my own heart, which is God inside. He is bigger than any pain. We can learn to forgive. Do not let your heart be disturbed by any pain. People hurt one another. And when we hurt another, we hurt ourselves in one way or another. The most important thing I learned in that bathroom is that you cannot hate people if they are struggling with the truth. As the Bible says, they do not know what they do. Close quote. In her parting words, on that stage, Imakuli stated, As Anne Frank said in her diary, I still believe deep down in my heart that people are good at heart and do not let yourself give up on mankind. I know this is possible. Close quote. In Wayne Dyer's book, Inspiration, Your Ultimate Calling, he named the rewards of living an inspired life. The third reward reads, your consciousness expands in every direction. It means that there is no up or down, no right or wrong, no north or south, no beginning or end. You begin to move in a conscious consciousness place in yourself. When you move into spirit, you will find yourself doing things that defy your understanding. This could certainly be said of Imakuli Ilibagiza. So you might be wondering what has happened to Imakuli. Four years after her freedom from that tiny bathroom, Imakuli immigrated to the United States and began working at the United Nations in New York. A year later, her book, written with co-author Stephen Irwin, left to tell Discovering God Amidst the Rwandan Holocaust, was released. She was married to a man who worked at the UN, and they have two children. In 2007, Imakuli established the Left to, the Left to Tell charitable fund created to help support Rwandan orphans. In that same year, 2007, she was awarded the Mahat, uh, Gandhi, Mahat Gandhi International Award for, Re for Reconciliation and Peace. She holds honorary doctorate degrees from the University of Notre Dame and from St. John's University. She is now a full-time public speaker. Hear what Wayne, Mark Twain wrote about forgiveness. Forgiveness is the fragrance that the violet sheds on the heel that has crushed it. I want to repeat that. Forgiveness is the fragrance the violet sheds 
on the heel that has crushed it. We are um, we are at the time for our very last break. I am your host, Dr. Sophia, on Highway to Boundless, broadcasting live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, I will have some parting words for you. Don't go away. The earliest human societies worshipped a female goddess. Little is known about this time because we did not always have a written recorded history. It was around 3100 B.C. when the Sumerians invented the first written language, and everything that preceded this time is prehistory. The prehistorical record includes all of women's unwritten history from 30,000 B.C. to the time that men began achieving political power around 3,000 B.C. Male feminist artist Kimberly Berg maintains a strong position in educating and inspiring both men and women through his devotional art to the goddess in all women. Studying their history is paramount to understanding who women were and who they would become later living in a patriarchal society. To learn more about this important time in our history, go to www.isisrising.net. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. I am delighted that you are with us. This is Dr. Sophia, your host on Highway to Boundless, broadcasting live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Well, I want to reiterate something that I said a little earlier. Forgiveness brings with it a plethora of blessings. When we forgive, we align ourselves with our higher nature and as such evoke the tender mercies of a loving God. Because of our willingness to forgive, we too are forgiven. And from our state of blamelessness, we derive strength, courage, fortitude, and a drive to contribute to the world that good that has come from our experiences. If you would like to take your journey through forgiveness to freedom, to claim your personal power, or if you would love to get up each day with joy and gladness in your heart for another day to live life doing what fills and fulfills you, or if you would like to experience a life of financial freedom by following the identification and implementation of your creative genius, or if you would like to discover your creative capacities and build a life using your inherent gifts, if you would like to enjoy more free time in your life and have opportunities to travel, if you want to learn to be a successful learn to be successful in any endeavor that you would undertake, please send me an email at boundless I have a question at gmail.com all in lowercase. And let me know about your dreams and I will contact you and we will have a consult, which um, which will be of no charge to you. I have some wonderful programs that were created with you in mind. Should you come to the realization that your life needs broader horizons, new experiences, the urge to be creative like you've never been before? Your readiness for a deeply loving relationship or the establishment of a new business, please check out my website at www.highwaytoboundless.com 
and acquaint yourselves with the programs that I offer, which also include a description of their content. I would be pleased to visit with you about your interest and about the possibilities of working with you as your mentor and life coach. If anyone in the listening audience would like to ask any questions, make comments about Highway to Boundless and its content, or just share your thoughts about any show, please send an email to me at boundless. I have a question at gmail.com. Where appropriate, I will certainly respond. On the 21st of June, not very long ago, Earth's clockwork and rhythms rolled into summer with a partial solar eclipse. With the impeccable timing of this celestial body, we experienced the longest day of the year, and the season of summer was in. It is my sincerest hope for each and every one of you that your summer is filled with enjoyment, with treasured memories, with ever-tightening family bonds, and with new adventures with safety and love in all of your activities. The rhythms of life are driven by universal laws, as is everything in existence. To know the laws and to live by their formulas is to truly experience success in any arena of your life. I would be honored to be your guide, mentor, and coach as you learn and apply these guiding principles to whatever goal or dream you hold and that will lead you to an awe-inspiring success through your dedication and perseverance on the plan of your making. I look forward to being with you again next week. You have been listening to Highway to Boundless with your host, Dr. Sophia Samuels, having broadcast live on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Until next time. This has been Highway to Boundless with your host, Dr. Sophia Samuels. Join us each week as we address and highlight the way to realizing the life we long to live. Here on Dr. Samuels' Highway to Boundless. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company. 